In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to flexible budgets and standard costs, going through the questions and then practicing test taking skills with them. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. First question. When there is a difference between the actual volume of production and the standard volume of production, which happens? A. Production variance. B. Volume variance. C, overhead cost variance, D, quantity variance, or E, controllable variance. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. When there is a difference between the actual volume of production and the standard volume of production, which happens? A, a production variance. So when there's a difference between actual volume, we might think, eh, production variance possibly. B says a volume variance. So the actual volume, that sounds kind of reasonable. So we'll keep the volume variance. C says overhead cost variance. So when there's a difference between the actual volume of production and the standard volume, we might have a, a cost variance. Sounds kind of reasonable. D says quantity variance. And volume basically is the difference in quantity. So that actually sounds reasonable too. E says the controllable variance. And you, know, you might consider that reasonable as well. I'm going to cross that one out. That was, we can get one out of, crossed out here. Let's go through this again. When there's a difference between the actual volume of production and the standard volume of production, which happens? And of all these answers, the production variance, it doesn't seem like it's going to be related to production. Of the other three, B, C, and D sound more reasonable. Volume variance sounds reasonable. Overhead cost variance and quantity variance. Now, of those two, the volume and quantity variance sound similar because volume and quantity variance sound kind of similar. So I'm going to remove D, uh, C and say that since those two are similar, maybe it's between those two. And of those two, we typically call it the volume variance. So we're going to say it's going to be a volume variance. So final answer B, let's go through it last time. When there is a difference between the actual volume of production and the standard volume of production, which happens? B volume variance next question as volume increases a unit fixed cost increases unit variable cost decreases b unit fixed cost decreases unit variable cost increases c unit variable cost decreases unit fixed cost remains constant d unit fixed costs decreases unit variable costs remain constant or e both unit fixed cost and unit variable cost remain constant. Now, let's go through this again using the process of elimination. As volume increases, so the volume units going up, we're talking about the fixed costs and variable costs. Now, usually we see this in this context, it's usually related in with relation to our standard costs. We're usually applying this to kind of overhead costs, but notice that the same kind of question could be asked just about variable costs and fixed costs normally and our normal behavior of costs. So we're thinking about the two types of costs, variable and fixed, as volume increases, as we produce more stuff, 
what happens with the behavior of these costs. So we can basically think of it in that same term. So as volume increases, notice we're talking about unit fixed costs increase unit variable costs. We're always talking about the unit costs all the way through. We're not talking about total costs. And that's going to be the confusing point between this item. We're talking about unit costs, not the total costs. And therefore, when we have an increase in production level, we know that the variable costs actually remain constant because we're talking about per unit. So as the, as the production goes up, we're talking about variable costs. They stay constant per unit. And the fixed costs actually decrease per unit because the fixed costs are fixed. And as we produce more units, if we were, take it, if we were to, to put it out as a per unit fixed costs, then the fixed cost would go down with each unit of production. That seems counterintuitive given the names of these things, because of course variable costs you would think would stay same, and fixed cost, uh, a variable cost you'd think would change, and fixed cost would remain the same. However, that's with regard to totals, and right here we're talking about the unit costs. So keeping that in mind, then A says fixed costs uh, increase, unit variable costs decrease. Well, the variable costs are, are not going to decrease when we're talking about the unit costs and the fixed costs will actually go down as the volume increases. So it's not that B says unit fixed costs decrease. We would ex That's correct. We would expect that unit variable costs increase. Well, no, the unit variable costs don't increase. The unit variable costs remain the same, which eat each unit and not the total variable costs, but the unit variable costs. C says unit variable costs decrease uh, that's not true and then unit fixed costs remain constant that's not true and notice this second one is not true because the total unit co fixed cost would remain constant with an increase in volume but the unit fixed costs would not they would go down and then d says unit fixed costs decrease that's true and then unit variable costs remain constant that looks correct and then E says uh, both unit fixed costs and unit variable costs remain constant. No, that's not correct. So final answer D, as volume increases D, unit fixed costs decrease, unit variable costs remain constant. Next question, as volume increases A, total fixed costs increases, total uh, variable costs remain constant, B, total fixed costs remains constant, total variable cost increases c total variable cost decreases total fixed costs remain constant uh, d both total fixed cost and total variable cost increased e both total fixed cost and total variable cost remain constant so let's go through this again using the process of elimination as volume increases so now we got volume increasing and we're talking about the totals here so notice we have the totals so we're not talking about per unit. Now we're talking about the totals, which is more normal, what we would normally think. And normally we would think that variable costs uh, as, as there's an increase would change and the fixed costs you would think would uh, remain the same. So the total, the total variable costs will change with an, with an increase. They'll go up at a constant rate and the fixed costs will remain the same. So let's go through this and see where that would be. A says total fixed costs increase. No, they're going to remain the same. Total variable costs remain constant. No, uh, they're going to change. Unit fixed costs would remain constant, but not the total. So now we're talking about total. So that's not it. B says total fixed costs remain constant. That sounds correct. Total variable costs increase. That sounds right. I'm thinking that's going to be it. D or C says Total variable costs decrease. No, they're going to go up with production and total fixed costs remain constant. That's correct. And then D says both total fixed costs and total variable costs increase. No, they behave differently. And E says both total fixed costs and total variable costs remain constant. No, they behave differently. Final answer B, as volume increases, B, total fixed costs remain constant, total variable costs increase. Next question. Variable overhead spending variance, fixed overhead spending variance, and variable overhead efficiency variance can be combined to find either A, controllable variance, B, quantity variance, C, volume variance, D, price variance, E, capacity variance. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. 
variable overhead spending variance, fixed overhead spending variance, and variable overhead efficiency variance can be combined to find A, the controllable variance, so I'll keep that for now, B says the quantity variance, now we're combining all of these together and the quantity variance seems kind of like one component, so it seems like that can't be all of them you would think. C says volume variance, and again that kind of sounds like a component, so I don't think that's going to be it. D says price variance, which again sounds like a smaller kind of component. And E says capacity variance, which sounds like a more inclusive term. So I'm going to keep A and E. Let's go through this again. Variable overhead spending variance, fixed overhead spending variance, and variable overhead efficiency variance can be combined to find either A, controllable variance, uh, E, capacity variance. Now the term we use here is A the controllable variance. Final answer, variable overhead spending variance, fixed overhead spending variance, and variable overhead efficiency variance can be combined to find A, controllable variance.